In a series of videos, I will cover basic properties of Hausdorff measures that are usually left as exercises in textbooks because they mostly follow from definitions. Uh, but I will nevertheless, nevertheless give some more details and uh, uh, provide references when, whenever needed. So recall the definition of the Hausdorff content and then the Hausdorff measure as its limit. Today we show that if a x is any metric space, then the Borel sets are hs measurable, and s doesn't have to do anything with the space x. It can be any non-negative number. We will conclude this. Actually, the most of the job will be done by this theorem that we won't prove here about outer measures in general. So if you have an outer measure such that you have this additivity result for subsets that are positive distant from one another, then the Borel sets become measurable. Actually, these me outer measures are um, important enough that they have their own terminology. They are called the metric outer measures. So they are outer measures that have some respect for the metric of the space. So, in order to prove our theorem about Hausdorff measures, we only need to verify this star for um, mu equal hs. And for that, we only need to establish the following inequality, because the reverse of that inequality is always true by just being subadditive. So, we focus on proving this inequality. If the left hand side is infinity, we have nothing to do. So suppose it's finite. And by definition, Hs of A union B is limit of Hs delta. So for delta pretty close to zero, we have a very good um, estimate of Hs in terms of Hs deltas. Now, suppose in particular that delta is less than this distance of A and B. And we can, by definition again, fix a delta covering such that the summation of s powers of diameters is very well approximating the hs delta of a union b. hs delta of a union b is infimum of such sums, so there are sums pretty close to that infimum. Now comes the property of delta being less than the distance of a b. We have a covering of the union of AB. So we have a bunch of sets, a countable bunch of sets EI, which cover the whole of a union B. Now, because each set EI has diameter less than delta, if EI picks a point from A, it cannot pick a point from B because that would force the distance of AB to go less than delta, but delta is less than the distance AB by assumption. Therefore, every set EI you pick either helps cover B or helps cover A. And we can then divide up the index according to that. And I call this IA the subset of natural numbers, those indices uh, which help contribute to covering of A. And the analogous terminology and notation for IB. So A will be covered by those EIs where I belongs to IA and B will be covered by union of those EIs where I belongs to IB. And these of course are still delta coverings of individual sets. So what we can write is that so we had HS of A union B pretty close to the summation of diameters to power s. And then uh, that summation is, of course, you can just divide it up into two summations. Uh, IA and IB cover all of the integers. Actually, technically, this is not correct because in your EIs, there could be theoretically some EIs which contribute to covering neither A nor B but we can go back all the way back and remove them from the covering in the first place because they don't co help cover a union B either. 
Anyway, so assuming that that has been done, we have this equality, uh, this breakup of the summation, and now because these EIs form a delta covering of A, that summation is an upper bound for this. Remember that the latter is a is the infimum of such summations, and the same goes with HS delta of B. So what we ended up proving is that HS delta of A union B is bigger than or equal to HS delta of A plus HS delta of B. And uh, now we let delta go to zero. Every element here is finite. So the limits beautifully converge. So you recover what you wanted. So we get this inequality, as we mentioned above, the reverse is always true. That establishes the additivity on sets that are positively separated. And by the theorem, um, what we get is that Borel sets of metric spaces are HS measurable. We will cover, prove also later that um, HS are also Borel regular. What are Borel regular and how do we prove that? Uh, let's meet in that other video. Have a great.